Oh, welcome back to Fish Gum. I am Tony Fagioni. We will be filming in two speeds today. Slowed it down to 10%, which you can see right now. Those are some Jack Creval. And we're also going to be using 25% of normal speed, which is right here. That Pompano is hooked on a float hook with a piece of fish gum. The float hook is actually made by putting styrofoam beads on the actual hook, a technology really that is revolutionized by the Sinker Guy, Chip Brundage at thesinkerguy.com. Check out his content on YouTube as well at the Sinker Guy. You can see the little foam beads and this pompano is hooked up, coming straight in. The conditions today are four foot seas, four foot waves at the beach, and we're dealing with a bunch of trash and tremendous current. You'll see the current increase later on in a lot of this footage, and it really it's almost a miracle to catch fish. This is slowed down to 10% to show you the float hook. You can see the styrofoam beads right on the shaft of the hook, covering it, trying to conceal it, and you also see the fish gum. And look at all that sediment. Here comes a Jack Creval, goes for the beads first. Still, not a hook up there, but definitely causing the bait to float. Here comes some more Jack Creval. These little Jack Creval are everywhere fishing today. Don't know what it is, if they've all hatched and are just swarming the shores, but they are there. Here comes a crab. Really interesting to see a crab with all this tremendous current and wave, but they're there. Here comes some more Jack Creval coming through, making one little swipe at the bead first. Very interesting to see that. That one comes back again, smells it, looks at it. No moss. So be thinking how to navigate in this dirty water, cloudy water, turbulence. I am using a Sputnik by the sinker guy. There goes a pompano. He did take one bite. I'll get a close-up on his actual hit here in a second. Uh, very hard to see. He's hit the dropper that is further away from the screen, and there he goes. Just hit it. Let's see it go in its mouth. And it's in, and I believe this fish will be hooked up. Another smaller pompano, and when they're hooked up, they are shaking their heads like crazy. And that movement really does attract bigger prey on that pompano to see him going like crazy. There's the full speed for a second there. Look how erratic that fight is. We'll slow it down here again and we're on to the next frame with the pompano still trying to get off. Again these are four foot seas and I believe this pompano will get off. Shake free, done, and off to fight another day. But if you notice how just that current, look, look at that current this is not even full speed. That is 25%. Here's a good look at the float hook. It's got the foam beads on the actual hook itself, doing its job, floating that fish gum. Really two small floats on that hook. Not impeding at all the gap. Should be able to hook a fish, as you've seen already. Here comes some more Jack Creval. You know, you've probably seen previous videos of mine where it's just crystal clear. Not on a day like today. There are some strategies I think we can do. I think color on really hard to see days are great. And I also think a rig that is up higher in the water column. So if they're swimming below, they look up and they can see the bait a little bit better than it being in the middle of the water column. So getting your bait up higher closer to the surface, not on the surface, may actually be a good thing. Look at that float hook in stasis. But again, the, the turbulence is, is really amazing to see. I'm going to say this over and over and over again. If you're fishing and the waves are four foot and above, it's a miracle to catch a fish. Here comes some pompano again. Goes for the fish gum first. Second time, it's in its mouth. Spits it right back out. Here's a good shot in its mouth. 
and it comes right back out. Man, and just think if that was in full speed, how quickly that would have happened. Here's another strike in its mouth. I do like the fact that we've seen twice now him not eating the float first, but actually going for the bait first. Not a hookup. Not surprised by that because of the way the waves are just ripping. And you just think about being in a wind tunnel and somebody is is has a hamburger and those winds are like 70 miles an hour and they're trying to say, come take a bite of this hamburger in this wind tunnel. That's the way this is right now. We are in a current tunnel. These fish are fighting their way to stay in line to actually feed and just to swim. And it's so difficult to eat in this type of turbulence. So when you're at the beach, try to find some feature that may offer some support out of any kind of tremendous current. I am fishing a first gut. There is actually a lot of current where I'm at because I'm fishing a rip right now. And you look at that current and see how fast that rip is moving. These fish are fighting through it. There he goes, spits it out. More Jack Creval coming into frame. And the float hook is doing its job. We've got some more fish coming in, slowing it way down. This is 10% of the speed. And again, dark clouds, sediment, current. That is not your best friend right now. It takes a swipe at the bead. Not the bait. That one took a swipe at the bait, not the bead. And this is happening in split seconds that they're feeding. They get that bait as fast as they can, try to take a swipe at it, and then they get back in to try to fight this current. I think it's important to look for areas, again, where the current may not be so great, where the waves aren't crashing so much. There goes a whiting. That's a pretty decent-sized whiting. In and out of the frame, that's the first whiting I have seen this year on underwater action. And there goes your float hook, I believe, doing its job like a pro. A lot of action. There were a lot of hits back at the shore. I did hook up to some of these little Jack Creval. But I really am amazed by all the opportunity that there is out there but it's very difficult to catch fish at a humongous rate when the surf is like this. So be thinking of strategies to, to leave in the comments below. I do believe a float hook is something that is working fairly well. Uh, I want to see the float hook do a little bit of a better job. Uh, when I say better job, I mean uh, I can see more clarity and get really in some good slow-mos without all this sediment. But we need to see this trash in the water. We need to see what we're up against. I thought that this water was completely clean, except for the current. Until I came underwater and saw this, I was like, you know what? This is crazy, dirty, cloudy. There goes a Jack Creval being hooked. These Jack Creval are just absolutely great bait to use live, or even as cut bait not really see anything today that would eat these fish but again you can't really see much if you go back to my old videos that i've done recently you can see both droppers because the water clarity is so good you can maybe make out the second dropper but all we can really see up close with some type of clarity is the first dropper to give you a little perspective that first dropper is about 18 inches away from the camera lens so I believe we probably got about two feet of visibility to sea bait. Here comes a crab once again. Does have the fish gum. Really rendering that dropper useless right now. Let's see if he'll actually hang on in this current. Speckled. Crab are some great bait. Use the knuckles. They smell horrible when you cut them up, but they're absolutely great bait, and he just got washed away. <laughs>
There he goes. You can see him barely hanging on. Oh, don't give up. Don't give up. Still fighting for the fish gum and the foam floats. And it is so turbulent out there, but he is hanging on. What are some areas that you try to fish when there's this much current turbulence and trash? Tell me strategies that you have in terms of beach structure that you like to look for where it's not as much movement of water. And that may be something we do a better job of looking for. These Jack Creval are going back at it. These cameras, I have two, are out there for about 180 minutes. And we have an appearance of a blowfish. This guy, I cannot believe he's staying in one place. He's just got little flippers on the side and the back of the tail. But you can tell he's, he's really struggling to try to fight to get some of that bait the best he can. Thank you so much for watching. Put your advice in the comments below. Let's get better at fishing during rough waters. And join me next time right here. We excite to strike. God bless.